Hello everyone, it's Patty here. I am just going to let a few people join me. I'm so excited that you're here. This is our final day of our uh, five day birthday celebration. So if you've been following us on Facebook or even checking uh, your email every day, we've been celebrating 10 years in, in, in as a Deep Space Sparkle blog. and. We've been celebrating through videos and flash sales and daily freebies, so it's been really fun. For me, I'm heading off to New York tomorrow and for the week, and one of the videos that I did this week, I think it was on day three, was, uh, no, day four, how important workshops are and conferences, and I'm actually living that because I tend to go to about two or three different conferences and workshops every year just to kind of, um, just to educate myself, to keep learning, to be inspired. And so this week I get to be in New York. I mean, how, how tough is that, right? Um, all week long, just to learn from other entrepreneurs, to be inspired, and just to kind of fill my own creative well. I'm really looking forward to that. Today I want to talk to you about the differences that you're making in the lives of all of these kids that you teach. And this was special for me because Neil and I, um, we spent um, a lot of time <laughs> in, in, in traveling together in, in a car. We drove from Santa Barbara to uh, Yellowstone National Park and then on to Boulder, Colorado to visit our daughter, Elliot, who's in um, at CU, Boulder. And so we, we decided to drive instead of fly because we just wanted to spend some time together. Well... Not that we don't spend enough time together because we work together, we live together, but you know, this was different. This was not work related. But in one of the 60 hours of, of driving together, we kind of started talking about uh, the Sparklers Club and just Deep Space Sparkle in general and how proud we were of the blog and how it has evolved. And one of the, the numbers that Neil, I mean, he's kind of a numbers guy, and so he's always, you know, talking about the numbers and the impact and all that stuff. And he was saying, you know, Patty, I, I actually looked into the Sparklers Members Club. And he, every time someone new joins, they have the opportunity to kind of add a little bio. How many uh, students they, they teach, whether they're teaching at home, like with their three kids, or if they're at like three different schools and they teach, you know, a thousand kids. And he kind of did this, uh, he added them all up. And he come, came to the conclusion that... Uh, the members just in the Sparklers Members Club, just with the members who basically, you know, gave him this information, that we reach over a million kids. A million! That is a big number! I couldn't believe it. You know, from this small blog when I started as an art teacher, just kind of posting a lesson here and there, now just in the Sparklers Club alone, we're reaching over a million kids, pretty much per week, because every teacher usually generally teaches every week. So I was, I was um, kind of humbled by that and I kind of wanted to take it down uh, like a different level of saying, well, it's not just about me. The, the kids that you're impacting is, is huge. And so today's live Facebook is all about the five ways that you're making a difference and I bet you're not even aware of them. Now, some of you are. <laughs> Most of you are. But I wanted to talk to you about kind of what I kind of experience as an art teacher and what I see you guys doing. Um, our Sparklers Members Club is, is the community group is thriving. <laughs> you should see this. It's actually hard to keep up with because you should see the stuff that these teachers are doing with their students. It's amazing. Um, but every now and again, we get these little notes from these teachers, and here's one of them. Uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, uh, Joy, she submitted this little picture, and we, we often you know put our pictures into the Facebook group, and she says she works with special needs kids, and this is a picture of her child's, or one of her students, her special needs students' art, and she said this particular little guy came to our school because he rarely spoke, so he didn't speak to anybody. And today when he completed uh, this particular painting that I just showed you, he smiled and he told me, I think my mom is going to be amazed. So 
So if that came from any other kid, you'd be like, yeah, she, she will be amazed. <laughs> but this joy, she said she had tears. He had never said that many words to me at one time. Think of that impact to that child and how safe he felt with joy to be able to, um, to express those words after he completed this painting. I mean, that was pretty special. Um, there are little moments like that that we get every day that we may, if we don't take the time to really kind of stop and, and kind of listen to how special that moment is, it tends to get lost. Now here's, um, I know <laughs> we all get these pictures. Oh my gosh, I have to read this to you. And every teacher out there is going to totally relate because we get these like in space. Like if you give your students five minutes at the end of class, especially if they're kindergarten or first grade girls, um, boys too, but mostly girls, they will take this opportunity to write you a sweet little love note. And this is for Mrs. Holterman. And dear Mrs. Dear and D-E-E-R, I love that, of course, dear Mrs. Holterman, it's all about uh, phonetics. She says, I really love you. R-E-E-L-E-E. -E -E. I really love you very much. I, oh, I had a hard time figuring out this word. It's O-W-A-S. I always. Mm -hmm. First grade teachers can read this like, like perfect. I always think you are so beautiful. <laughs> love Piper. Isn't that the cutest thing? You know, when they're little, they just love on you because you let them paint. You do these amazing things. So, you know, we get these little love notes, but it goes a lot deeper. And so I'm going to start with number, number one. Hey, Linda. Number one is you make a difference because you show up. I think this is under talked about. You show up every day. If you're an art teacher, you might be at a different school a couple of times a week. You might be at one school. But you show up every every day and it's not so much that you're showing up and it's not about the the lessons itself it's that you're showing up and you're behaving in a certain way when kids walk into your classroom there you are you are the consistent uh, teacher and you know the thing that we have to remember and parents know this kids are watching us all the time I remember my daughter saying and my sons too, they're saying, you know, we love the teachers that they know what to expect. Now, you could be funny all the time, excellent. You could be boring. <laughs> you could be, you know, it doesn't matter how you teach, what you teach in some ways. It's that you show up and you're consistent. Your behavior is predictable. That impacts students more than you realize. When children know what to expect from you, your rules, your expectations, your behavior, um, I tell you, that makes one of the biggest impacts uh, for, for students because you know what happens? They will feel safe with you. They don't like teachers who fly off the handle because they're like, oh, oh my God, <laughs> what just happened? I'm feeling a little unsafe. And that's how, how kids think. Hey, Christine. <laughs> so when you just show up, uh, that is one of the most impactful things ever. And if you show up in a consistent way, you know, thumbs up to you. So number two, you don't discriminate. Now here's the thing. Um, I don't know if there's a lot of uh, art specialists out there. If you're an art specialist, you know, maybe give me a little heart. Uh, art specialists will see all kids in school. And so will art teachers. But as an art specialist, maybe you're coming in and you're not a credential teacher or whatnot. Uh, you don't have the, um, the credentials. You can't see the story of all the children. You don't know the backstory. You don't know what uh, students have IEPs or anything like that. You basically have children coming into your classroom, but you know really nothing about. Sometimes as a classroom teacher, you need to know everything about this child because children come with a lot of different issues, you know, learning styles, and, and that helps the classroom teacher kind of... Um, uh, plan their lessons and teaching around to help those students. But as an art specialist, you're not privy to any of that. So as a result, we just we can't discriminate. We have kids coming into our classroom. We don't know their history, so we we treat them all the same. We don't even realize that. We like for me when I had students, I had lots of inclusion students, but I didn't know why they were inclusion students. I didn't know who had autism or who didn't. 
who spoke, who didn't. And those things don't matter. The only thing that matters is that they come into my art room ready to do art. And I teach them art. And you teach them art. So it's all about... And, and the next day, if, if a kid gets into trouble, oftentimes we have so many kids. <laughs> you can't remember which kid got in trouble. Um, I have the hardest time with that. So the next day, blank slate. Or the next week, like if you're an art specialist, you might not see these kids for another week. How are you going to remember how they behaved last time? Unless you took meticulous notes. And if you did, then awesome. <laughs> I never did. So when the kids came into class, it was a blank slate. All, if, if a kid got in trouble because they didn't follow the rules or they were talking, when they came in again, it's all good. And that was one of the things that I really think made such a difference because children want to be forgiven for, you know, maybe not having the best experience in our class the last time. And you get the opportunity to pre present a different project, present a different technique, present something new. And it's, everything is like refreshed. It's always like clicking the refresh button in our class. And so I think that you may not realize it, but I think that makes a big difference for a lot of kids. I wrote all my notes down just so I could keep on track people. Because, you know, I'm noticing the videos that I did. I'm just going on like this, like a lot. <laughs> so, so hopefully you can bear with me. But this one, three. Um, I love this one. You illustrate by action the art that's important, that art is important. I remember my daughter, she went into seventh grade and I was her art teacher for a few years and you know, of course we did fabulous art, I was the art teacher. But then she went to middle school and she had an hour of art every day. An hour. Can you imagine what you could do with an hour of art every day? You get to see the students every day. That's what middle school. The art teacher did nothing. She let the kids come into class. She had a few supplies and she really didn't do anything. And I remember going to the back to school, um, you know, back to school night and being so excited to meet the middle school teacher. Like, oh, we'd have so much in common. And she just didn't um, give any kind of presentation or she didn't say what the kids were going to learn or she didn't talk about her own passion. It was basically dead. And I thought to myself, now, I, I kind of feel bad saying that because you know, I feel like we all should be kind of sticking together, but she wasn't a good art teacher. She didn't have any passion. She didn't really want to be there. And I would, the only thing I could think to myself was, what a missed opportunity. What She had five classes a day, and basically what she was telling students was that art wasn't important. It's not important enough to uh, create a plan with, to, to put in the effort to develop a, a program. She was telling the kids that it didn't really matter but that's not what you do. Because you're actually watching this video, because you're actually you know, learning and growing and doing what you do every day, you're showing kids through all of the different lessons that you're providing, all of the different techniques that art really matters. When you do that art show, when you are cursing and swearing about how much work it is, you know what you're saying? You're saying that art is really important. You're showing the students that their art on the wall is important. That the fact that they created this is important. You're telling parents that it's worth the effort to do it. You're telling the community that it's worth hold, having this program. It's when you demonstrate by your enthusiasm to art, however you teach, it doesn't matter if you teach process-based art or if the projects are too project-based or Whatever we get hung up about as art teachers and we have these debates, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that you are showing, however you teach art, that it's important. And your perspective matters. So, illustrating the, the fact and showing, like actually physically showing by coming up every day, by showing up, by treating kids fairly, by interjecting new lessons, art's important. Art is worth your time to plan and, you know, present these lessons. I, that's true. Number four, this is, um, I thought about this one because I couldn't quite identify the reasons why. Uh, I couldn't articulate what it was about this point that I had in my head. And, and finally, 
it dawned on me when I when I was reading. Uh, I think it was this letter. So <laughs> I love these. This is not for me. This is for um, oh, it doesn't say. Oh, Mrs. Taylor, Mrs. Taylor. So she put this in the Facebook group, and it's a nice long letter. You know how children. Uh, they're, you're an art teacher, and the children go back to their homeroom class, and the teachers get them to do writing assignments. And oftentimes it's like, well, pick a, a teacher that has impacted you. And of course, the art teacher gets chosen a lot. And so Mrs. Taylor was chosen for, for Stephanie's, you know, who she likes the most, or who she appreciates, or whatever it is. But so there's a, like a lot of things of, uh, I love this, I love that. But here's the thing that, that stuck out, um, stood out for me. It was, Stephanie said, the student, Mrs. Taylor lets us look at pictures when she went to Guatemala. She even let us look at her pictures. So the way she wrote that was, Stephanie felt um, appreciative of the fact that Mrs. Taylor let Stephanie into her life a bit. She shared her life with her students. And I think when we share how our affects us, how living a good life affects us when we travel, like when you show your student, when you tell your students stories about, I remember telling my students a story about when I went to Hawaii with Neil and we were swimming, snorkeling, and I, a, a sea turtle swam underneath me and I freaked out. I just <laughs> jumped on Neil's back and he was drowning and I just was, I was freaking out. The kids laughed, but they were like, oh, you went to Hawaii? And I'm like, I went to Hawaii. You saw a sea turtle? I saw a big sea turtle. When you share your life with the kids, then they know what's possible. If they don't know what's possible, if they don't know what life can give them with travel, with going to a museum, with reading books, if you never talk about your experiences as a human being, Children in your environment, they know, they don't know the possibilities because some kids don't uh, aren't exposed to any any dreams. Are this is your life? This is what it's going to be. Especially if you're teaching kind of in an inner city school, and and life can kind of close in on kids, and they don't know what's possible. Uh, as you get into other schools, you know children may have really engaged, inspiring lives, and that's fine too. But you never know what kind of experience that you've had will impact a, a kid. You can't possibly gauge this. You can't possibly know in advance. But just by telling stories, you're impacting kids. You, there will be a light bulb that will go off at some point with some child. And, and you're responsible for that. So sharing your life is uh, kind of underestimated. Uh, it's, this is what I wrote down. If children don't know what's out there, their possibilities, their scope of possibilities narrows. So that's that's number four. Number five, I have to read this one. I'm not sure what I was trying to say here. It's the most important one. And now I know. You allow them to say without words how they feel. And as a result, it's celebrated. I love that one because here's the thing. Our teach I mean, there's a lot of teachers who do this. Classroom teachers do this. Everyone does this. But our teachers, you are in this most special um, situation, opportunity, that you get to allow children to basically express their ideas, their thoughts, their, their world's perspective through, um, through their art. And they don't even have to talk about it. Oftentimes, I know I'm like this, we can't verbalize how we're feeling. We have to create something. I do that a lot with just creating lesson plans in the members club. Um, for me, I, I, don't, I like to be kind of quiet. I know that might be a shock to you with me talking to you like this, but I spend most of my day kind of curled up in my office, holed up, and like with my headphones on, I don't want to talk. I just want to express what I'm thinking just through what I'm doing. And I don't want to chat about it. <laughs> and kids are very similar. They, um, that's what they do too. So I think 
you are in this opportunity. You have you give children that portal. You say it's okay. Now, those are my five tips. So number one, you show up. Number two, you don't discriminate. Number three, you illustrate by action that art is important. That's a big one. You share your life, and you allow them to say without words how they feel, and it's celebrated. You celebrate them. I think everyone, whether you're six or 16 or 60, we all want to be heard, we want to be appreciated, and we want to know that we matter. Oprah says that all the time. <laughs> and you know, I listen to Oprah. Whatever she says, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And I think that's right. Now there's only, um, the sad thing is, I actually printed out a quote for you. It's my very favorite quote, and I, it fell on the floor. <laughs> I'm not going to get up and walk around, but I had it in my computer, so let me just find it for you. Um, let's see. Oh, I, <laughs> Shannon's here, and she's like, oh, no, I'll get it. <laughs> Thank you, Shannon. <laughs> well, that's good, because I actually did not have it on my computer after all. But here's the thing. This is my favorite quote from Martha Graham. It's a letter that she wrote to Agnes DeMille. And it basically encapsulates everything I feel about being a creative person. And you're a creative person. You're an art teacher. And you might feel like, I think there's a spectrum of creativity. You might feel like, oh, I'm the most creative person ever. And I'm, well, I can kind of get by. Honestly, I'm kind of in the middle. I don't feel like I'm the most creative person ever. Um, I know I... I do have a lot of creative things, but you know, I'm kind of in the middle. So this is really important to me. My writing coach, um, teacher, she's not a coach, she was a teacher, she taught me. And she handed this out in one of our writing critiques. And I just thought it was the most beautiful thing. And I don't really, I'm not really into quotes very much, but this is the one that I've kind of had on my office wall for the longest time. And I'm gonna read it to you. There is a vitality a life force, a quickening, that is translated through you into action. And because there is only one of you in all of time, this expression is unique. It goes on. This is the part that I, I like most. And if you block it, it will never exist through any other medium and it will be lost. The world will not have it. And this is the most important one. It is not your business to determine how good it is or how valuable it is, nor how it compares with other expressions. It is your business to keep it yours clearly and directly, to keep the channel open. You do not even have to believe in yourself or your work. You have to keep open and aware to the urges that motivate you. Oh my gosh, I just... Every little sentence in this quote just absolutely just keeps me going. And she says, keep the channel open. No artist is pleased. And this is so true. We are never satisfied with what we do. But you know what? When you are working from your creative soul, when you are working from your deepest place of purpose, that it doesn't matter. You don't judge it. You just let it go. And you just... Well, someone there just wrote that all down. Well, who did that? That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. For I think it was either Shannon or Amy that must have done that. Thank you. Um, it's just one of those things that when you're up there teaching, teach from your heart. And know that every child that comes into that art room just is looking to you, uh, not with pressure, but to do what you do best. They trust you. And really, that's all I have to say. So I'm hoping that this resonates with you. Definitely add your questions and comments. I know there was a lot of questions that kind of went by, and I, I was just so into talking <laughs> that I didn't read it. Well, the truth is, this is the truth. I can't really see <laughs> the writing. I think I need more, uh, like, glasses again. Um, anyways, that's beside the point. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, today is the biggest prize of all. If you've been following my five days of the birthday celebration, you know we've been giving a prize. Yesterday we gave away a workshop for free. 
um, to the summer art workshop here in Santa Barbara with food and lodging. That person's going to have a blast. But today, guess what we're giving away? We're giving away 10 memberships. 10 people. You have a really good chance of winning. If you want to be a sparkler, if you are a sparkler and you want three extra months tagged onto your membership or three extra months paid, then you definitely need to download today's freebie and you'll automatically be entered in to win. And we want you to try out the Sparklers Club because it is literally the most amazing thing. I have never been happier um, with just being close to these ladies. Be, and, and men, a few men, uh, to share teaching art with people is in a, such a, 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 a personal way. I mean, we have a lot of members and not every member is on Facebook, but the majority, I would say 75% are. And it's an amazing group. I want you to experience just how easy it is to get, you know, an art program kind of underway or to have someone have your back with a lesson plan that you need on a Monday morning. Like, we, that's what we do. We have creative lesson plans for you. So go ahead, download today's freebie. Amy will put it in the link in the show notes or not the show notes. I'm talking like a podcast now. We'll put them in the link in the comments or in the um, somewhere. <laughs> and just go there and download the freebie and then Neil will, will kind of do his math stuff and pick a winner and we'll let everyone know tomorrow. Now tomorrow is the last day to buy any of the flash sale items. This is important because we, um, the Sparklers picked uh, their three favorite bundles. Now the Met Sparklers Club is all about art bundles, artist bundles, theme based bundles and it has like guides and posters and everything in these little bundles. They're very creative and fun and I think inspiring and they're good lessons but they're not available to the regular um, public these are kind of there you have to be a sparkler to access them but until tomorrow you can access three of their favorites which is the impressionism bundle which is the marine and sea life bundle and the Georgia O'Keeffe bundle and the marine and sea life bundle is huge <laughs> That's so many lessons. It's all about sea turtles and whales and, and sharks. And um, for all ages, it's all about what you would find like in the sea. Clipper ships and sailing ships and sailboats. Anything to do with marine and sea life. The Georgia O'Keeffe Bundle is kind of one of my personal favorites because I kind of went a little bit deeper than the oversized flower. So there's a lot of art projects that are good for everybody, all ages. And then the Impressionism buzz Bundle, I think it's what was one of the favorites for so many people because it's such a beautiful technique. The lessons are beautiful. And it's just one of those um, bundles that just go, uh, like when the kids create the art, you're just, mm, <laughs> just love it. So only until tomorrow, they will, they'll be taken out of the shop tomorrow um, at, at midnight and they won't be available unless you're a sparkler. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If there's any questions, I'll totally um, answer any questions for you. Um, now I'm actually, I saw that uh, Amy is, had just put in the link, so that's awesome. Thank you, Amy, for that. Amy's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this has been fun. You know, I don't often do live. I've been doing, uh, I've been trying to commit to doing live videos on Facebook every Thursday at 3.30. I won't be able to do it this week because I'm going to be in New York. Uh... But you know what I like most about them? It feels like I'm teaching again. I love teaching. I love doing what you're doing. You get to stand up and impact all these kids. And doing the live Facebook, uh, it, it kind of lets me, it, it makes me feel like I'm still teaching again. So thank you for indulging me because this has really been fun. Um, after, I won't have a live this Thursday, but every Thursday at 3.30, you can tune in. And what I thought I would do is just do drawing handouts or drawing demonstrations, how I teach a lesson. And then also, um, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to do how to do a little um, clay turkey. So you got to watch that. Make sure you stay in touch with us with our Deep Space Purple newsletter. And I'll let you know what's coming up. Okay, everyone, I am going to tune out, tune off, not tune out. <laughs> And I'm hoping that you guys have an amazing day. Thanks for watching.